And the SETs, they are a governmental level agreement, but who is actually realizing them and going to realize them? It is the companies and organizations. So why sustainability is important for the business? Right. So present also this to the readers already in the beginning of your report. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges that you are facing and what is the positive outcome that you create? Speaking of sustainability, a podcast where we talk to front runners, innovators and business specialists on, well, sustainability and where they think their industries are headed and more importantly, how they can make them more sustainable. Hi there, I'm Hani Larma from EcoChain and in today's conversation, I'm speaking to Tulia Natiuttu, the CEO of the SDG Monitor, a cloud-based software that allows you to track your sustainability progress. We talk about the UN SDGs, what they really are and how you can apply them to your company's sustainability strategy. We also talk about once you've actually measured your uh, impact, tried to improve and now you want to report on it. How can you actually do that in an interesting way? So how can you visualize your data and turn it into an interesting story? Stay tuned. So hi, Julian. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. Thank you so much, Hadi, for this invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Nice. So I always like to start the conversation a little bit with yeah, a small introduction from our guest and about what you're doing yeah, in your work. Okay, so uh, I am the CEO and uh, co-founder of SDG Monitor and SDG Monitor is a sustainability performance measurement tool. My job is to help companies and organizations in measuring their sustainability performance and show their environmental, social and governance uh, impacts as well as, as well as the SDG impacts. And that is where the SDG comes also for, for our company names, those sustainable development goals of the United Nations. I think what would be really nice to start off with is to really get into what are the SDGs? It can sometimes be a little bit vague. Obviously, you're an expert on this, so it would be really great to hear what really are they and, and what can companies use them for? All right. So the SDGs, these are the 17 sustainable development goals, which actually create the main content of the Agenda 2030. And Agenda 2030 is in a nutshell, the blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet. Mm -hmm. These SDGs, they were created in 2015 in New York and uh, all the United Nations member states have adopted them. So 193 countries, uh, developed and developing countries of United Nations have taken um, this step towards uh, achieving these 17 goals. And the SDGs, they are a governmental level agreement, but who is actually realizing them and going to realize them? It is the companies and organizations. And what is very unfortunate actually at the moment that we are leaving behind in all of the 70 sustainable development goals as of today. Okay. For example, what we want to do is to end the pover poverty in the world. Mm -hmm. So this is the SDG number one. Mm -hmm. There is a reason why SDG number one and in poverty, it's the number one goal as well. So because it, it actually impacts throughout all of the other uh, SDGs. Right. And this is something that we have to keep in mind and, and, uh, and keep on acting on these SDGs. They can be broken down into the triple bottom line. So they can be divided into the environmental, social and governance uh, impacts. Mm -hmm. Companies have now increasingly taken the SDGs as, as one of their frameworks or even their main framework of their sustainability strategies and policies and including them into their reporting and communication as well. So there are, of course, tools available to do that. There is SDG Compass that provides guidelines for companies, how they can align their strategies, as well as to measure and manage their contribution, the realizing of the SDGs. Also our sustainability performance measurement tool, SDG Monitor can be used easily and uh, with, with a hand, hands-on tool to align the SDGs with the sustainability strategies. Right. So kind of shortly put, it's a collection of goals, which a company can aim towards achieving in in three different sectors of sustainability. Yes, absolutely. And uh, the SDGs can be aligned to actually any sustainability policy or strategy of any size of company, a small SMEs or larger corporations, and also 
within different industries as well. So, uh, because it is very global and comprehensive, it, it really takes all of the areas of sustainability inside it. It's definitely a great framework to mirror your, your business operations into, and also where are you providing that positive impact as well? Yeah. And you mentioned, um, that you're leaving behind the 17 different SDGs. Can you maybe uh, elaborate a little bit on that? What do you mean by that? First of all, for the SDGs, the, the measuring of the impacts and within the different indicators that are that the SDGs are structured into, there is a there is still a data missing. Okay. And also like more clear clear KPIs. We are missing resources as well to to start to measure them and to provide more data basically. And and this is this is one of the reasons, but also we have this setbacks with COVID-19 that is, it has impacted very negatively throughout the different SDGs. For example, if we take SDG number five, uh, gender equality, there's have uh, a lot of domestic violence has increased due to this of being home, etc. Of course, we need more companies to take also more action on mm -hmm. this, on this topic. And really like uh, clearly uh, with their sustainability performance and their measurement of their actions to show where they are providing that positive impact. So if you think about companies who are trying to, to do their best in terms of, uh, for example, using the SDGs or in general, trying to improve their sustainability strategy, how can companies actually do this? So how can companies align the SDGs? Exactly. I can give a, give an, give an example on this. Uh, let's take uh, a Dutch company, Ocean Cleanup, that would be something that, uh, uh, most of you have at least heard about. Yeah. It was create, created in 2013, and this is a nonprofit organization with a mission to develop and scale technologies that will clean up our oceans from plastic within actually their business model. They are already in, um, improving. The SDG number 14, which is life below water, conserving and sustainably using the oceans and seas and uh, marine resources. And for this company, their goal is to keep going until 90% of floating ocean plastic pollution is out and they have different systems of doing this. And uh, throughout this innovations, for example, the ocean cleanup system 002 uh, is, is a system that where an artificial coastline looking like a, this U-shaped barrier that brings the plastic into a retention zone. This system uh, finds the hotspots in the water where, where there's a lot of plastic like gathered together. And then they bring those to their vessels and then they actually produce valuable products out of that waste plastic that has been removed from the ocean. Really good examples. Uh, and are you seeing any kinds of trends within the market, how companies are, are actually using these? Not really very like trends can be seen here, but uh, because SDGs are something that every company organization, yeah, nonprofit, uh, NGO, social enterprise, uh, to link their positive impacts uh, to people and planets because they fit for everyone and from SMEs to large corporations. Yeah. Of course, there is no standardization on, on, on the, on the SDG use at least yet. So looking forward to that, if it will come. Yeah. And I think that's something interesting that you mentioned that it does fit for a lot of companies and we are seeing more and more sustainability claims from, from lots of companies. And I think later on we can touch upon a little bit. Yeah. What the risks of that are as well in terms of greenwashing and, and that type of thing. But first, I think it would be really interesting to also hear about when a company decided they want to work on a, an environmental SDG goal and they have measured their impact, they have done the reductions, they've logged their, their progress and are working towards something really great. How can they actually communicate in the best way possible about their progress and about the things that they are doing. Yes. So, uh, first of all, in, in order that your sustainability report is actually adding value and meeting the ex expectations of your different stakeholders, it's important to create a report that uh, builds credibility, transparency, and comparability. These are quite of like the key um, elements of a, a good sustainability report. Mm -hmm. So show 
show these three things. So first of all, first of all, credibility, it's, that's something that proves that you are doing something based on a framework. Okay. This framework can be GRI, it can be SASB, ISO, you, you, you might be have signed the global compact of United Nations. So you might be using the SDGs as well. And also some different calculators, certificates and, and yeah, different standards. So this is something that actually creates credibility for that. Then you have the transparency part. So it's actually as important as, uh, as, as credibility. So, um, transparency in the context refers, uh, to how you are doing your reporting. So it means that how you should present your actual performance. So like you said, that you have done these things. So now how you're actually presenting it, even if it's not maybe some positive, uh, thing that happened in the past year, because of course the sustainability report always looks in the, in the past year. And if you maybe have not uh, met your goals and good reporting openly brings the challenges of the company uh, or the industry, what they are facing. And here, of course, quantitative data and published data shortages are very important. Yeah. And then we to get, look at the comparability. So that actually reflects your performance against your competitors. So comparability can be of course, realized in different, different ways. One way is to measure your, your performance by using industry specific key performance indicators, those KPIs. Mm -hmm. And there is of course, some several sources where you can, you can find them and, and then enhance your reporting. So yeah, yeah when you write or submit a report, choose the, choose a known framework to increase credibility and show your bad numbers to increase transparency. And then choose industry specific KPIs to ensure that it's comparable. Yeah, absolutely. You know, those are really, uh, yeah, really great tips. What I also find interesting is, that you mentioned is, uh, also talking about the things that maybe didn't go so well. I know a really nice example of this. There's a company, uh, in Amsterdam called Ace and Tate, which do, um, sunglasses. And they actually did, uh, a whole report about the things that they have done wrong. So they mentioned, they did a real reflection and mentioned the things that, um, that they didn't do so well and how they were planning to fix that or how they had already managed ways to, to uh, fix those issues. So I think that was something that got a lot of media, media attention and also a, a very positive response uh, as far as I know, um, from consumers and, and the public, because a company that's willing to, to be honest and put out there the, the types of things that they didn't necessarily do well, you also have more trust in the things that they talk about that they are doing well. Yeah, this is absolutely, absolutely, totally right. It, it definitely creates a lot of credibility within your, your stakeholders. And also in your, in your report, you should also keep in mind who are your stakeholders? Who are you actually writing this report for? Right. And, uh, and with that golden line, keep giving in, into mind what kind of content they also, also want to see from you. Mm. So keep in mind that you clear, build a clear, a clear structure for your report. So often you have a lot of, lot of things to say. And so allocate time, enough time to define that structure and also provide that purpose of sustainability for the Asantate example. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, probably they have also written that down that why they are to, in this report, they wanted to provide this view of things that didn't go actually as planned. And also at the same time, you have an opportunity to provide to this, uh, your stakeholders, like, uh, what action you're going to take to improve it. Right. And, and, and then it, you, you're actually bringing it to a very concrete level and, uh, in order to uh, validate those claims, you, you provide your concrete actions. And this also comes to the purpose of sustainability. So why sustainability is important for the business. Right. So present also this to the readers already in the beginning of your report. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges that you are facing and what is the positive outcome that you create? Yeah. And also how I see it is uh, that it kind of, it starts with, with measuring and data. But in the end, the, the report isn't about just putting numbers on the page and letting people figure it out for themselves. It's about trying to present things that are relevant for your stakeholders of your company uh, and present them in a way that it's interesting for them to see. So do you have any 
advice for companies, how they can actually do that? What would be some kind of concrete ways they could tell the, the story of their sustainability a little bit better? Yes, absolutely. There are, uh, of course, there are several different ways to build your sustainability report, but there are some key rules that uh, it's good to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. First of all, as the report always looks back, presenting just with a one page, you put with the, with the one page, uh, we call it like a one pager of your past year, and then you summarize what were the key highlights that you achieved uh, during the past year. And what is also very important to also to put the structure uh, with color coding, it's easier, easier to follow when you, for example, separate your E, S, and G teams uh, inside the report, much more easier to read. So keep it reader friendly and, uh, and also keep the, keep the length something very, very concise. There are a couple of great examples. For example, um, IKEA's sustainability report is it's a, it's a very excellent, uh, excellent one. They, uh, they have a very clear structure. They use the ESG teams with colors. They are presenting also the stakeholder groups. They, they use images that, that tells a story. It's, they are not just cut it and based it there. They actually put a lot of thought into those images and they pre provide more insight uh, to the report. And also, so take a, take a look at those images and as charts as well, what you use, those tables, those infographics, uh, that they are using a clear color coding, for example, highlighting always the last year's progress. I guess reports is 54, uh, 53 pages for the last year, 2021. It's a great example. As an average sustainability report for larger companies is some, somewhere at 150 pages. Wow. So. Who is actually going to read it uh, from word to word? Yeah, your performance is the main main input that you actually want to want to provide to the reader as well. Right. And and then of course, yeah, we have also the uh, uh, the cream washing part that has to be taken into account. So don't be scared to put in the report those challenges and failures that is that is an excellent way to engage the stakeholders so also like uh, if you're using these sustainability buzzwords open them up and very concise way and what is the content in them for you for your business yeah and i think that kind of as i already mentioned before there's there's so many companies that are coming out with with claims and along with that also comes some uncertainty. And I think being able to back up your claims with, with real data and, and also good quality data is really important, but it's also about how, uh, as you mentioned, you are wording it. So if you are using a term that can be interpreted in many ways, you explain it and you really talk about what that means for your company. And I think that also goes along with being able to, to have a, that clear goal for why are you talking about the things you're talking about in your report? What is your goal with um, putting it out there in the world? So keeping the stakeholders again in mind for yeah, who you're writing for. Yeah, that why factor for the business. You have to always start from them, even when you're uh, starting to write your first sustainability report. Yeah, so translating the data into an understandable story that basically anyone can can read and and know what you're doing and why yeah yes and and something that's also very important to keep in mind that the sustainability report is not the only communication channel for your sustainability activities and uh, operations use it as as just one of one of those oppor uh, opportunities to put your message out there and make it also very easy to follow in, in your website mm -hmm. You know, the, the people go and look for it. They want to find it quickly and then they can download the PDF. Also summarizing the report in different ways, right. using it several times, cutting and sharing it in your social media channels as well is extremely important. If you make it already the sustainability report itself into something understandable and, and that you've been able to translate that, that data into something beautiful and uh, inspiring, then it's much easier to also be able to repurpose that content and use it for different channels. And what would you say are 
kind of the most common mistakes that, that you've seen in, um, in reporting? One of the most biggest mistakes is that you are writing a too long report. The report is completely too long and it's not well structured. And when it's not easy to find that data and the input from the report from in the first place, you probably also get unmotivated to, to look at until the end. And also the tone of voice uh, has to be thought about. And so it's easy to read. You can quickly also see that it's not written keeping the stakeholders in mind because, uh, yeah, always engage with them if you, if, because this is something important that you are putting out. And, uh, and they are the ones also who will be, who will be assessing your company uh, by their findings. And one of the, one is also very important is that you are not giving concrete examples. Mm -hmm. And here I have also an actually an example from, from, from Ikea as well, mm -hmm. but they are putting out very clear and concrete actions. For example, they have this, um, the home solar system action that they want to bring this affordable renewable energy solution in in uh, more than 30 markets by 2025. So they are really like opening up each of these actions that they do and always comparing to the baseline. So that they, they provide the last year's value and then they compare it to the baseline. So it's actually very easy to see then, okay, are you coming, are you going, are you advancing or are you maybe leaving behind with this goal? Right. And how would you say, um, it's a bit of a big question, but, but how could companies prevent these mistakes? Choosing the framework is, is uh, absolutely one of the key things. So choose the framework uh, to which you want to align your sustainability strategy with. And, uh, and, and is it going to be these standards that I was talking before, like GRIs, SASB, ISO, et cetera, and how uh, also, how are you using them in your reporting? And you want to know what you're measuring and why are you measuring it? And make sure you have access to the data. This all comes to the choosing the right KPIs. And then you start to measure your action. You show the performance, your ESG impact. So be honest uh, and yeah, don't only, only communicate that positive progress. Right. Are there also um, some other companies or, or people or organizations uh, that you think are contributing in a positive way to our society in terms of sustainability? Yeah, personally, for example, I really like secondhand clothing. So one of the, the companies that's, that I really like are Bestiaire Collective, for example. So they are, of course, allowing people to purchase other people's clothing and really keep the loop uh, of fashion clothes and bring it more of a, a cool and fashionable perspective. I think it's really great that there's these companies that are able to, to provide that. Exactly. And I have actually for, for the secondhand clothing, a good example from, from Paris, uh, where I lived uh, before for a longer time, there is a very young uh, startup called, uh, reuse okay. and, uh, and this is a group of like, um, sisters who, the, or they call it, they, they call them reuse and, uh, who come to pick up the, uh, the, the clothes, clothes that the other, uh, that, that the people don't use anymore. So they come to their home, they take them and they re resell them on their, uh, uh websites. Oh, right. And uh, I, I think this is the more easier we are doing these things to people, the more impact we are actually going to see as well. Yeah. It's so important that these kind of businesses exist and, uh, and tools are available and, uh, and the, uh, digitalization is definitely providing us a favor in that sense. Yeah, that's true. I mean, technology, it, it's so tricky because it has, it has so many opportunities and benefits that it can provide. And of course, then there's also, yeah, some actions that people just have to take in their personal lives and, and technology is not going to be the, the only solution. So that's also something we talked about in a previous podcast about how, um, Technology is going to help us, but it won't save us alone. So we need to all take our little actions as well in our, in our daily lives and, and try to also work within our companies to improve the things that we can in the realm of our uh, space that we work in, for example. 
Yeah, there's uh, there's so many things that also people can do in terms of SDGs, for example. Well, let's take SDG number 13, this is the climate action. So you can start to just educating yourself about these basic facts on climate change, how these impact your, your life today, and also in that how it will, will impact in the future. We are also consuming a lot more and... Uh, and in that sense, also secondhand clothing is an excellent option to actually put on these valuable materials back to the cycle right. and, and back to use as well. When we are, yeah, we are using this planet's scarce resources and uh, yeah, the planet just cannot take all this pollution and trash that we are creating. Somehow. Right, definitely. Well, thank you so much to Uliana. We're already at the end of our interview and I think this has been really helpful for a lot of companies to... Uh, to build their sustainability report and be, to be able to understand a little bit better about how they can use SDGs within their company. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Hani. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this chat. If you enjoyed this episode, please click here to subscribe or here for more recent episodes. Bye-bye.